Hello, this is Rick again, your bike fitness coach, with another video. So just the other day, uh, Icebug sent me uh, one of their new products. It's the Icebug Black. So let's call this Insoles Part 2. The best just got a little better. So let's go through and see why this is a good insole. So I get this all the time. All the time customers are coming in, I have foot pain. You got to dive a little deeper. Where does it hurt? Usually they will say outside of the foot, which is normally a, a uh, pain on the fifth metatarsal. It's a good indication that the shoes are too narrow for their feet. Or the inner arch, uh, poor arch support. Normally, like we've discussed in other uh, videos, the little flimsy, floppy pieces of foam that the manufacturers put in really are not good insoles. They are basically to cushion the bottom of the shoe. For the foot, a hard carbon sole shoe is very uncomfortable without at least some kind of a minimal padding, and that's all they put in, minimal padding. My metatarsals hurt. Those are the balls of the toes or the balls of the feet. Uh, they will they will hurt sometimes on uh, longer rides, the shoe's too tight. There's a number of issues there as well, or bad insults. Or my first metatarsal hurts. That's an indication of uh, sesamoid inflammation, what they call sesamoiditis. My toes go numb, or my heel hurts, which could be a plantar fasciitis. On some of these, a little more uh, in-depth analysis and I sometimes will send them back to a physical therapist to get a little bit of treatment and then come back in for the rest of the bike fit. So what's important in an insole? Uh, support, of course, good support uh, along the entire foot. And we'll talk about how to achieve that. Comfort, of course, comfort. Fit and adjustability, cushioning. There are several options out there. Uh, what I've experienced and seen and tested, the ice bugs, in my opinion, are the best out there, best price, performance. They do everything in it you need in an insole and around 50 US dollars. The G8 Performance is another good insole. It's over twice the price, but the claim to fame of the G8 Performance is that the arch has, uh, there are several arch heights that come with their insole, and you can move the arch forward, aft, inside, or outside. So there's some great adjustability. With the ice bugs, you can do a similar thing. You can, if you're, if you have insoles and the arch hits, uh, of the insole hits the arch of your foot more forward, the trick is get the next size larger insole. It's going to move the arch more forward and just trim a little bit more off the toe section. So that's one way to achieve that. When you go to the next level, what they call custom, you can do a, do a Google search for custom insoles, custom cycling insoles, and you'll get every single generic model out there. They're about $100 for a generic model. What they might do is color the bottom a little differently. And so you see in the lower right-hand corner, a, um, a, a uh, running insole might have an orange bottom and a uh, trail running or, or hiking insole would have a blue bottom and a work boot insole would have a black bottom. They're essentially the same insole, different marketing, different colors to make it look like they're different insoles for different purpose. Those are the generic models out there. All the manufacturers have them. They're non-cycling specific. The issue with the cycling shoe, it's a low volume shoe. So it takes a very specific thin insole to fit in the shoe to make it work. Then you can go up to the true custom, which you see in the bottom, the crush box. You step in it. Uh, the problem with the crush boxes are you can't really put enough pressure on the crush box that you would simulate or emulate on a pushing onto a pedal. So this is more of for a running shoe form. And I'd say it all the time is that the custom insoles, the medical, medical insoles, they are specifically for running, uh, jogging, hiking, 
work boots and things like that, but not cycling specific. They don't uh, they don't work well with with cycling shoes. So the ice bugs. This is the new ice bug black, and what makes it different? We'll get into it in a second. So what makes them different? The models available, the size available. We'll get into that. The long term use, innervation of the foot, and some final thoughts. Here is the the lineup as you see to the right. Here's the lineup now: the black, the yellow, and the blue. So again, cycling shoes are a low volume shoe. Running shoes are high volume. Uh, my first. Uh, Experience with insoles, I went to a podiatrist when I started having some foot problem 20 years ago. They, through the insurance, they made a custom insole, orthotic. And when it came in, they called me in. Again, I brought my cycling shoes. I didn't bring my running shoes. They were specifically for my cycling shoes. Brought, brought them in, brought the cycling shoes in. The uh, podiatrist cut the insole so they fit the inside of the shoes. I started putting my foot in and I could only get my foot halfway in. The insole took up so much room in the shoe, I could not get my foot in. So the podiatrist took the insole out. I started cutting some of that cork off the bottom, put it back in again. I still couldn't get my foot in, pulled it back out, started ripping big pieces of the cork off and the bottom of, of where the, uh, where the rest of the mid section of the insole was all of the padding, put it back in. I still couldn't get my foot in. He ended up ripping everything off, but the carbon fiber support and the padding, and that was barely enough to get my foot in the in the shoe. He basically took him and said, well, you know, these, these, these are worthless at this point. That's not going to work for a cycling shoe. And then we talked about it a little bit, and he said, yeah, for the most part, most companies do not make cycling specific insoles and you're going to have a hard time finding something. So I took that as a personal challenge to go find something. And I did, I did a whole insole test. And again, every manufacturer claims to make cycling insoles, but very few actually do. The two main ones are in our uh, ice bug and G8 for the higher performance insole. I would consider specialized number three, but they are, kind of in between the support of a floppy piece of foam from the manufacturer and a um, ice bug or a G8. They're about in the middle. Uh, they're still kind of floppy. They don't have a lot of good support and they have like a tilt built into them as well. So the, the ice bug, the different colors are the black are for tight fitting cycling shoes. The yellow are for regular fit cycling shoes and the blue are for running, walking, work shoes. Most of the triathletes that come in and purchase the ice bugs from me buy the yellow for their cycling shoes and buy a set of blue for their running shoes. There are three arch heights available, low, medium, and high. You can adjust the 4F like we talked about, getting a larger size to move the, the uh, arch forward and then just trim more. They have supportive insole conforms to the forefoot. So if you look at it, it's very, it, it has a cushion underneath, which we'll see in a minute. Uh, there's a supportive non-slip gel heel cup, which actually hooks onto the heel and holds the heel in from slipping. It has the largest met bump in the history, which are important to cyclists with higher arches. Their foot tends to collapse more because of the high arch and their metatarsal area gets uh, cut off from the transverse arch, collapses, and cuts off the nerve supply to the toes. So they get a lot of um, complaints of dead toes or numb toes. So the arch and the met bump in the ice bug actually uh, solves that issue with most cyclists. They have great arch support and discuss custom versus out of the box. So that is the custom. You'd go to a podiatrist like we talked about, or you'd go to a heel crush type of a, uh, a, a foot crush that really doesn't work for the cycling. Out of the box, you'll see that uh, there's only a few. Ice Bug and G8 are the two I recommend out of the box. 
As you see here, here's the bottom of the ice bug yellow. You can see that there is a met bump, a huge met bump that supports the transverse arch completely. There's a flexible, firm arch support. If you look how it's built, it's a it's a uh, just the right thickness of a plastic, and it gives it cushions a little bit, but it still provides a lot of support for the arch. And you have a gel heel cup, which protects the pads of the of the heel. The models are the low, the uh, the black, yellow, and blue. Here's the arch heights. The low has a 23 millimeter arch height. The medium has a 33, and the high has a 38, which is the same as the yellow. The blues are a little different. 26.5, 31.5, and 36.5 on the blue. And that's because the blue has a little bit more uh, padding, which we'll see in the next slide. The men's sizes are 4 to 13 on all three. And the four foot, I measured the four foot in the first metatarsal area and the fifth metatarsal area. And the blacks come in as two millimeter thick uh, foam padding. The yellows have 2.4 millimeter and the blues have 5.5 millimeter, which is really double the, double the yellow. Uh, the blacks, I now, I have a couple pairs of shoes that are just a little on the small side. So there's not a lot of volume in for me. So I'm now using the blacks instead of the yellows and it provides a much more comfortable fit for me. It takes a little bit of the uh, thickness out of the insole and allows my foot to have uh, that, reclaim that space. How good are they? Well, here's mine out of one of my cycling, out of my lake cycling shoes. Here's three years of daily usage. So as you see, they're just starting to break through the top layer. Other than that, they are fully, they look almost brand new underneath. So you can get, you're going to get three, four, five years of use out of these insoles. Again, it depends on how hard you're pushing on the pedals and how many days a week you cycle. So we talked about this before. What happens is on, on higher arch people, the um, transverse arch will tend to collapse. The uh, metatarsals tend to cut off the nerve supply to the toes, and that's where you get the, the numb toes. So this uh, fixes that issue literally 100% of the people, this, this solves that, uh, the numb toe problem for. Final thoughts. Uh, I love the blacks now. The blacks are in my lower lowest volume cycling shoes that I can now wear comfortably. With the yellows, they were a little tight and a little uncomfortable over an hour's ride. The blacks, I can ride all day in them. Works out perfect. I highly recommend if you look, are looking for a good insole, you give the ice bugs a try. Thank you. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up and like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.